Okay, here we go. Hi everyone, I'm Natalie from SoHungryHippie.com and today I'm going to show you about one of the more scary techniques of bag making and trust me you don't need to be scared. It is the twist lock. Turn lock, some people might call it something else. I'm going to take you overhead and show you up close. So this is what I'm talking about. This is just a little sample here and so you would turn this piece and open it like this. So this is the back of this side and this is the back of this side. It just gives a nice little closure. Let me show you this Harrelson bag that we put a twist lock on. Gives it just a really nice classy finish. It's easy to get in and out of your bag but at the same time it's kind of nice to not always have to go to a zipper to just use a flap style bag and a little turn lock. There is also, oh I can't, where's my sample? Uh, there's also a push lock. I like this style as well. If you don't have a push lock, which you just push it and it comes through that little flap and it's like that. If you don't have a push lock and a pattern calls for it, you can substitute the turn lock. Okay? kind of nice. Both of them are just, I don't know, it's like a level up of bag closure. Okay, so the most important tools you want to have are, these are the ones that I recommend the most. You want to have a magnetic tiny screwdriver set like this. I'm going to link all of the products, the exact products that I'm using today in the description box, okay? You want, if you want this really simple, get yourself a die set. These can be found on Amazon. I put the exact links to the ones I use in the description box. These make it so simple to cut out your shapes for the turn locks because we have to cut this really exact or you will see the fibers from the fabric poking through the middle and that's just not a good look. You do want, these come with these two sets, but this protects your cutting board when you are hammering down the die, okay? So you want to make sure you don't lose these little doohickeys. Now a lot of people like to use glue with their turn locks. I do not. I use By Annie's double-sided sticky tape and just a little smidge of it. You'll see it in the demo. This is what works for me. Glue. I often will use glue and then every single time after use, despite me turning the cap off and closing it and cleaning it, it gets gunked up. And then I can't use the glue. I have to, you know, cut off the tip or open it all the way and dip a Q-tip in. It just annoys me. So whenever I can get away from glue and use the tape, I do. The other thing is on insertion of this turn lock, I like to use a scalpel. We sell this one in the shop because it's nice and cheap and it works, okay? This is a surgical scalpel and we have these in the shop. Also, I use a friction pen for my marking and our classic nylon hammer. You don't need a traditional hammer. You will damage your table. So just get this little hammer. We have these in the shop. Very, very easy to use, okay? so. I will move my tools out of the way for a moment. I'm going to be demonstrating using this gunmetal oval twist lock. This is what it will look like once it's on. It's just a nice oval shape. We have ovals in the shop and we have kitty shapes in the shop. So for this demo, I'm just going to use two pieces of fabric, very, very clear, so you can tell what is wrong and set right side versus wrong side. I also fused fusible fleece onto this wrong side of my fabric. You might be using fusible fleece or you might be using foam. One thing that I want to make you aware of is if my bag is just fleece, I have some scrap of foam nearby for this insertion and I will cut a tiny piece 
Like you don't need much. This is why I don't throw away my scraps. I'm going to use these two pieces for the lock. And the same goes with SF 101. I like to put this over top at the very end so that nothing can ever poke through and damage any fabric that I'm using. So I'm just going to cut two little pieces and we will use those as well. And then I will move that out of the way. Okay, so this will be my lining. I suppose that in all of my bags, I'm going to have a layer of SF 101. So I'm going to fuse that on quick now. I'm going to trim the excess away here. We're getting as real as we can without going through building an entire bag. Okay, so we've got our fabrics. One has fleece, one has SF-101. Now you will need to determine where exactly you want your twist lock. Usually it's up about a half an inch from any finished edge, okay? This bag, she finished the flap and then this was the last step. So let me just show you that real quick. First up, let's say that this is where we want the female piece and this is where we want the male, okay? So what I would do, first I always straighten my prongs up. And you wanna be gentle with these prongs because they can be a little bit delicate. You don't wanna be bending them back and forth 10 hundred times because they might break off. So just make them straight. And then the way I mark is I push down into the fabric and I can see two little dents here. And then I take my pen, my friction pen, and I mark there. That is the easiest way for me to see my markings. Now I'm gonna use a Sharpie here so you can really see it on the camera. Okay, that is where my male prong will go. I'm going to set that aside for the moment. I'm going to come over here and look at my die set for this female part. So this is, let's see here, this hole, this stamp might be just perfect. Sometimes you may have to use two, like this one, and then come in with this one. I'll show you that in a sec, just in case. I like to take this and trace with a friction pen. Then I can see that really well. I'm gonna go over it with Sharpie for tutorial purposes, okay? Oh, well, that wasn't a very good coloring job, but there it is. So I need to make sure that the fabric is cut out including those lines. I don't want any peeking. So I put my plastic piece under there. I put my die. For me, the sharp side is with this band, this silver band at the bottom. That's kind of the sharper side, so I know that's the one that needs to go down. And then I get my hammer. Now I'm overzealous. I hit it that many times because I don't want to have to come back. But if you're a little afraid, don't worry, you don't have to. But see how it's just perfect? Oh my gosh, that's going to probably be good. And if it's not, I'm going to fix it. You can use whatever brand of seam sealant you want. Right now I have this one in stock. Sometimes I have fray check around it just whatever you have it doesn't matter and for extra caution I oh oh my gosh well I guess that was under pressure under pressure I dab this around the edge usually it doesn't spurt out like that sorry I must have been overzealous in opening <laughs> Wow. 
that will prevent any future fraying with heavy use of the lock. You just kind of dab that around. This will all fade out. I'm not going to worry about it, okay? Don't freak out. That'll dry up and be gone. Okay, so let's take our magnetic screwdriver. This is another reason I have an extra foam piece. Put this here because you are going to want to put your tiny little screws on there so that you can find them. We have to take the back part of this lock. So that's why I get a magnetic one because I can just hold this with my palm and turn with my fingers and the screw comes out. It's not a bunch of wrist turning with a magnetic one. Some husband is probably watching and knows what that would be called. I don't know what that, I don't know what that is. Torque? Like a, uh, I should have asked Ramel. It's a need to know basis and I don't need to know. There. So now we've got it taken apart, right? So I'm going to place, actually, <laughs> normally you would have this so that, Okay, I'm going to recut this because I want you to see exactly what it looks like when you're making the bag. So let me cut the back side too. Because you wouldn't be looking at the fleece on a bag, so I don't want you to think that that's what you're looking at. Okay, there we go. We've got the hole. Now we're going to place the, oh, look at that. So I do have to make this a little bigger, and I'll tell you why. When I place this on here, the screw holes where we put in the screws, those have to be um, in the hole as well. So I do have to make this a little bit bigger, and that's okay. We need to show you that anyways. I'm going to come over just a smidge, give it a whack on that side. See, I took out that much. And line it back up here. Then I'm going to come over on this side and I'm placing my die just a little bit to the left. There it is. Looks like I missed a little of the front fabric. That's what I love about this is you can come back in and make it bigger and it's not a big hassle. It's not trying to fit in scissors in there. Okay, now that's fitting. We have no fabric edges showing. This is really good. I'm going to put my die back in the correct box. And then what I like to do, because I'm not a big fan of glue, is I take my tape and I cut tiny little smidges of it. Let me show you. There's that one. I love how this is only one eighth of an inch because it fits on the hardware too. I use it all the time. Okay, so I'm putting it down on the hardware, rubbing it in, and then I'll, I'll take the paper off. I bit all my fingernails off last night watching a scary movie, sorry. Oh my gosh, and then I put this on the wrong side. Usually you want the, the wavy side facing out, whatever. It doesn't matter. My smooth side is gonna be facing out. You see what I mean? Like, I don't let anything stop me, whatever. <laughs> We're gonna roll with it, it's good. It's gonna hold the lock in place. Now I'm going to flip it over. I can see those screw holes, but I've got to put on the top piece. So I'm going to do the same thing. Cut two little pieces. These are a little trickier because you've got the, the screw holes um, that lift this piece off. It's not flush, so you can't put it down on the flat. You've got to put it on the screw holes. And if you want to omit this, you totally can. I don't always put it on this piece. It's usually okay without it, but there's one. There's two. And now I'm going to place this on here. 
and then flip it over. Now, if it moved, don't worry, you can readjust. I know I'm going to have to get my big head in here in the way a little bit, but I'll, I'll move out once I place it. So I have to like come in and look and make sure that I'm hitting that hole correctly. And then I put my palm on here and I twist. And you'll feel it bite. That's in there. I could feel the, I don't know, torque? I don't know. What is that word? Somebody knows. And then I put that on and it's magnetic so it won't fall off. Hit that directly. Twist it on. You'll feel it start to bite. And if it's not, see I didn't get that lined up. I could tell that wasn't biting. So let me move my head in the way a sec. There it is. I see it now. Okay, there's the hole. Now I felt it grab. Yep, it's in. That baby is in. You can kind of turn it and get it straight evenly across. It's in. Looks good. And this is what it will look like on this side, okay? All right, now we're going to do the male part. So I made the markings where I need to make the slits for these prongs. So I bring my scalpel in, and I do not have my fingers in the way on the back. I'm just holding the fabric up so I'm not stabbing my cutting mat. My fingers are well out of the way. I push it through, and that's it. Let me show you again. I'm stretching this fabric taut. Everything is taut. Punch it through. That's it. Don't make it any bigger. Don't punch in and rip up. It'll be too big of a slit if you do that. Now I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to do the same thing to my foam. So I'll just skip the friction pen because I know you can't see that. There's the Sharpie. I make two little cuts. These don't matter as much if they're bigger because it's hidden. And then I'm going to take that piece from the front and push it through. Then I lay my foam right there. And then this, there's a smooth side and there's a side that's rough. Rough side down. You want it to kind of grip the foam. Push it all the way down. And then I push my prongs outward. And that's what I do. And then I take a scrap of SF-101 and I put it over top. And I press it. If you don't have a fusible, you could use a non-fusible and just use some of the Annie's tape. And then I know that baby's in. Now when you get it on the front, if you've got any puckering, don't freak out. Come in with your iron. Everything is okay. Most of the time, I think we can press things out with the iron and it looks good again, okay? So don't panic. There it is. There it is. And there it is. And your twist lock is done. And yes, the male side, the part with that post, this is where it will be. In other words, here, you don't see it from the lining. It's, it's hidden inside the bag. Now, I'm going to say this because somebody's going to do it and they're going to have it showing here. Okay? And I want to tell you that is not the end of the world. Carry on. Do it again. You can use that bag, your sister or brother or cousin or uncle, somebody will still be happy to use that bag. So it don't be devastated. Don't cry. It's okay. I have used many bags that I've done that with. Just, you know, just getting in a roll and not thinking or listening to an audio book and I just missed it. Sometimes I've gone back in and opened the lining so I can get that in there properly. 
you know, decide what you want to spend your time on. I would say most people probably wouldn't even think about it, but there you go. Anyone can do this. If, if you're really afraid, then do exactly what I just did. Some scrap fabric, get out your scrap interfacing, all your tools, and practice with me. Go through this video again and do it step by step with me. You can mute me and just have it playing in the background like I'm your sewing buddy. Make it half time. Whatever you need to do, just go through the steps. You actually can take this apart again and reuse your hardware. Let me show you. You might need a um, plier so you don't hurt your fingers bending these prongs back up. But look, I'm going to take it apart because you can practice, get comfortable, get confident, and then do it again. There's that piece. I can come in here with these screws. There's that, but you know what? Put it back together. Do not put all these tiny pieces in a Ziploc and think you're good. There we are. I'm going to put the screws back in. And then I can reuse this on a bag I make for myself. So you see, nothing's wasted. I think when we're learning new skills, there's actually no waste, even if I didn't take that apart to reuse and I left it here for a visual for myself for the future. That's not wasted because you're learning a skill, you're practicing the skill. You know, when you first learn to drive, all that time at driver's ed, even though it feels boring, it's not a waste. You're learning, you're trying new things. And that's what life is about. All right? So let me get out of here, and I will see you. Let's see. We're back Wednesday with a matchup at 7 p.m. Central. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.